hey guys welcome back to coding stuff and welcome to the kotlin plus firebase series till now we have covered email and password sign up and google sign in with kotlin and firebase and now in this video we'll see phone authentication with firebase in kotlin so yeah uh, i have created this empty project and i have created two activities or three activities basically one is the main activity that we get and then i have created otp activity and phone activity so these activities are empty for now so the first thing that we need to do uh, we will just click on the tools and firebase we'll click on the authentication we'll select uh, authentication using custom authentic authentication system and then we'll click on the connect to firebase we need to build a project so we'll click on that and if you don't have project created on the firebase just create one uh, firebase project i have already created one so this is kotlin firebase so it is built and i can click on connect to firebase so it will open new tab in the google chrome i'll select kotlin firebase then i'll select connect and it is connected so then we'll move to the kotlin firebase project reload it and you can see the two apps are connected here google sign in and phone authentication as well so what i'm gonna do now uh, we need to click on the authentication so we need to click on the sign in method and we need to enable the phone authentication so you can just enable this by click clicking on the add new provider and as you can see we got email password for facebook game center and many more so just uh, enable this phone authentication from here and then i'll close this so it is enabled now we'll add this firebase authentication sdk so click on the accept changes we'll minimize this and then we'll open the google chrome and we'll search for phone authentication with firebase click on this first link which is google Do firebase documentation and okay so we have done this part uh, adding dependencies and all that so uh, the second thing we need to do is we need to enable the safety net so for that uh, we need to click this android uh, device check api so it will open the google cloud console so it will load uh, till that time what we can do we'll move to the terminal and we'll, we'll write gradle w signing report and hit enter we'll copy our shaw keys and we'll add them in our firebase project that is required for phone authentication so we got the shaw keys i'll just copy this shaw one key from here and i'll i'll go to the settings project settings I'll select the phone auth project and I'll add the fingerprint here. I'll just paste that copied shaw key and I'll click on the save. So SHA1 key we got. Now I'll copy the SHA256 key. So again I'll copy it. I'll click on the add fingerprint. I'll paste it. Click on the save and yeah that's it. Now we need to download this google services.json file. So it is downloaded. I'll just copy this and I will paste it in. Let's uh, let's first switch to the project mode. We need to open the phone or our application, and then we need to open the app file. Just paste uh, that Google Services .json file here and change its name to Google Services click on ok so it will ask it to overwrite so we'll say yes ok so now we need to enable this uh, google android device verification so as you can see i have selected kotlin firebase project here so what you can do you just need to search your project and it will show show up here so then select that project like this and click on open 
and enable this for me it's showing manage so i have already enabled so for in your case it will show as enable so you just need to click on that okay then we'll again move to the phone authentication with firebase okay so our uh, safety net is done now I'll switch to the android mode so before moving to the coding part uh, let me show you that uh, the layouts that i have prepared so i'm not gonna create it in front of you instead i already created it because it takes time and so i will provide the github link in the description box so you can just copy this code and you can just create similar ui or you can create your own ui so yeah these images are downloaded from pick okay so we have one progress bar here and then we have one text uh, edit text another edit text uh, which is disabled we already set the country code so my country code is plus nine one and then the send otp button pretty simple then we'll move to, this is just an image then this is our otp activity in which again i have one image these are the edit text so what i done here what i'm what i have done here i just uh, selected all of these and then as you can see these are chained and then right click and click on the chain horizontal chain st style so i have already selected that uh, if you want to do it you can just click on that okay so what this uh, chains do uh, they just uh, separate all the widgets in the similar distance so yeah as you can see here okay again pretty simple progress bar and all so yeah first of all we'll move to the phone activity we'll just close all the activity main and main activity activity main is pretty simple i haven't added anything there but we'll add sign out button later there so yeah activity phone so first of all what we'll do we have one edit text here and one button so we'll create few let in it where for that so let in it where send otp button then we'll call one method here which will be in it we'll create it over here so private fun in it and inside that we'll initialize this send otp button equals to find your id r dot id dot send otp button phone number et equals to find your id r dot id dot phone number edit text again i uh, will create what late in it where for our auth so auth this will be type of firebase auth we'll initialize it over here so auth equals to firebase auth dot get instance okay so just after that after calling init method what we'll do we'll add on click listener to our send otp button so set on click listener and inside this what we'll do first of all we'll get the phone number from the edit text again what we can do we can create again late init var for phone number so number it will be type of string number will be equals to phone number et dot text dot dream dot to string and then we can have few checks so if number is not empty so is not empty and inside that again we can have one check if numbers length is 10 to 10 then we are good to go first uh, let's just handle the else condition for this so we'll just uh, display and toast here so make toast this and the message will be pretty simple please enter correct number we need to specify the length so short and dot show i'll just copy this line from here and so after this f uh, we'll also have one else which will say please enter number or please type a number okay 
so we are only good to go when the number length is 10 and it is the number string is not empty so when everything is fine what we'll do we'll add a country code with this number so number will be equals to plus 91 and dollar sign number okay then we'll copy some code from the firebase documentation so this one we need to copy this option so i'll just copy this and i'll paste it over here when everything is fine okay so we need to import few things so press import um, import and again import import and instead of phone numbers uh, we need to write number here and the callbacks will copy them from here so callbacks we get three callbacks uh, when we use full firebase phone authentication we'll copy the callbacks over here at the bottom while callbacks we need to import this we'll delete uh, the logs we don't need any log here uh, import the firebase exception import this exception delete the logs import this exception okay so most important uh, callback method is on code sent so we'll come back here again uh, as you can see sign in with phone auth credential we need to copy this method from here as well so this one again we'll just copy this so coding is all about uh, understanding the code not memorizing the code so yeah we can copy paste a lot of code we just need to understand where to use which code okay so let me just delete this i'll i'm gonna explain all of this so don't worry about that okay so we don't need to create this variables we'll just delete this okay okay so let's try to understand this code so yeah uh, first of all we created some late init words for send otp button phone number read text auth and the phone number again so then inside the on create method we called one uh, init method and if I, if I select this init method as you can see we initialize our variables here and we need to create one more variable for our progress bar so let me just name it as a m progress bar and it, it's type as progress bar okay and again we'll initialize it inside the init method so m progress bar equals to find you by id r dot id dot phone progress bar and we'll set its visibility to invisible dot invisible at the first okay and then uh, we'll just make it visible only when we click on this send otp button so <coughs> over here we can do it if everything is fine then m progress bar dot set visibility or visibility equals to view dot visible and yeah that's it okay so now we need to understand uh, this on click listener of send otp button first of all we get the text from the edit text and we stored it inside the number uh, or variable and then we checked if it is not empty if it is empty uh, we showed one toast which is please enter number and inside that we have again one check for the length of the number so if the number length is 10 then everything is fine uh, if it's not 10 then we will say please enter correct number so if the number is 10 we need to add the country code uh, add, uh, as a prefix of a number so country code my country code is plus 91 you can use your country code and then uh, we make our progress bar visible and after that uh, inside the options we need to pass the authentication uh, which is firebase auth and then uh, dot set phone number we pass number here then again timeout so 60 seconds and then activity which is this 
and then the most important which are the callbacks okay so we'll go to the callbacks now and what it's saying okay we'll make it private no issue so, okay so so phone auth provider provides us uh, three callbacks first one is the on verification completed second is the on verification field and third is the on code sent so what uh, happens in the on verification completed is firebase automatically verifies the code uh, it even doesn't need to send the otp it will automatically verify the code but this happens very rare so if uh, this method gets triggered it's very rare but if it's get triggered then we'll directly go to the sign in sign in with phone auth, auth credential method uh, so we'll go there later then inside the on verification field we get we get lot of exceptions here we can just handle them by you can just uh, log this error so log t and p dot to string and just we'll copy this again and we'll paste it over here so so this happens when the request is uh, invalid and this happens when the sms code of the firebase project has been ex exceeded okay so this is on verification field we'll just minimize it and then the most important method which is on code sent so when the otp is sent to the uh, phone number this method gets triggered so we need to handle this one so as soon as the otp has been sent first thing that we'll do uh, we will navigate user to the uh, otp activity from the phone activity but with the intent we will pass this verification id and the token as well we'll create one intent so while intent this will be equals to intent and we need to we need to specify specify two two parameters here so first will be this and another will be the otp activity class dot java so with this intent we will pass the otp first parameter will be otp that will be verification id and the second parameter that will pass is the rescinding token so just keep the key as a rescind token and the value will be token okay and then we can just we can just start the activity with this intent and yeah that will be happy again we will overwrite the on start method here which will check if the user is already logged in or not so auth dot current user if it's not equal to null means user is authenticated we will send him to the uh, main activity so start activity intent from this to main activity class dot java and yeah that will be happy so i guess uh, that's it for this class if you need something i will come back here later okay we need to make our progress bar invisible so visibility this will be equals to invisible so view dot invisible and yeah so inside the so inside the otp acti activity we will use a lot of code from here so stay with me so first of all let me just close this activity phone and we'll open the otp activity and the activity otp so here we have six edit text so and again one otp recent otp text view and the verify button so let's just create few variables for them again we will create few variables so private lead in it where uh, let's just create one otp variable which will type of string again private lead in it where for our recent token which is which type is uh, let me just check it over here side the callbacks and 
okay uh, i forgot to explain this sign in with phone auth credential method we'll just uh, go back there let me just uh, okay this one and we will also have the phone number here so let in it where phone number which will be type of string okay so we can just pass phone number from here as well so intent dot put extra this will be phone number and we'll pass in the number okay so sign in with phone auth credential we'll jump to that method so in here we, we are just passing the credentials like the otp and the number and then auth dot sign in with uh, credential this is the firebase method in which we have to pass the credentials so this credential we get passed from here as i mentioned already on verification completed this methods are uh, triggered very rare but if it is uh, if it is triggered then we'll get called this sign in with phone auth credential method in which we are passing the credentials and again we are just checking if uh, if it is successful or not so if it is successful again we can have one toast so make toast and this we can display the message uh, what authenticate successfully Those dot make length short and dot show again we can just log here so log d which will be dollar task dot get exception dot to string okay so yeah this is same thing so that was uh, the sign in auth pro so that's what a sign in with phone auth credential method does so we passed phone number over here as well so we'll go to the otp activity first of all we'll get this stuff as soon as activity is created so otp this will be equals to intent dot get string extra and otp let me just check it is in small or capital capital so OTP and we'll convert this to string okay so after receiving the OTP we'll receive the recent token so this will be equal to intent dot get passable extra and we don't need to specify the type as we already specified it over here we just need to type the recent token and we need to insert the no null then we will select we will get the phone number so intent dot get string extra and yes this is the phone number or number again we need to insert the so this will be phone number i guess let me just check it over here so yeah it is phone number okay so again after this we will similarly call the init method we will create it over here so private fun init okay so inside the init function i have initialized our variables like auth and then i have find it ids of our all the widgets okay so the next step that we need to do let me just open the activity otp so here we have six edit text so each edit text for one digit of the otp so when i uh, write here like the otp number let's say i write two here i want the cursor to jump on jump on the second edit text and if i write something here then it should be jump on next edit text and similarly with this edit text as well so for that uh, we need to create one inner class so just after the init function let me just minimize this init function and over here we'll create one inner class so i'll write inner class and we'll give it name as edit text watcher and this will take one parameter which will be val private val view of type view we'll pass edit text here later so let me just import the view and this class will 
implement or inherit from the text watcher this one i'll press we need to implement some methods so alt enter and implement this three functions okay so let me just uh, remove this to do we will not do anything in the before text change or on text change we'll directly jump to the after text change over here okay so in here what we'll do we'll create one val we'll name it as a text and this will be equals to this p not so p not dot to string okay okay so we used to use a switch statement in java but we have upgraded version of it which is when so inside the when we will check for ids so view dot id and the first condition will be r dot id dot otp edit text one and then we'll have an if condition that will check if the text that we get passed here its length if it is equal to one then input otp2 dot request focus will pass the focus on the input otp2 so then another otp edit text 2 i'll just duplicate this line and this will be 2 if the text length is 1 we'll just request the focused on the otp3 edit text and here we'll also have the else if condition which will check if the text is empty so if text is empty then we want to send back the focus on the otp edit text 1 or input otp let's just say input otp1 okay don't request focus let me just okay then we can just duplicate this few times and simply this will be three this will be four and this will be five this will be four this will be five and this will be six this will be two this will be three and this will be four the last condition for sorry and then the last condition for otp edit text 6 this one so in here we'll just check if the text is empty then the input otp 5 will request the focus on the input otp 5 okay so yeah that's the inner class that will provide the feature of jumping the cursor from one edit text to another edit text okay then we'll just uh, minimize this class and we'll create another function so this will be private fun let's just name it as add text change listener and this function will just uh, We'll just add the change listener to the edit text so add text change listener and here we need to pass our class name which is edit text watcher this one and in here we just need to pass the edit text or view as you can see here we are passing view here we'll just uh, duplicate this few time again this will be two this will be three this will be four this will be five and this will be six similarly this will be two this will be three and this will be six and we'll call this method just after calling the init method so yeah let just minimize this too and now we will add on click listener to our verify button so verify button here yeah. verify button dot set on click listener we will collect the otp so let's just have comment collect otp from all the edit text edit text so let's just create one val uh, let's just name it as a typed otp and this will be equals to our input otp1 dot text dot to string plus input otp2 dot text dot to string plus input 
otb3 dot text dot to string you can have this inside one bracket okay so then uh, we can check if the typed otp is not empty it's not empty and then again inside that similarly we'll have check for length which will be equals to 6 we'll handle both else conditions in here as well we will display the toast make toast this and the message will be please enter otp then toast dot length short and dot show we'll copy this one we'll paste it over here as well and this time we'll type please enter correct otp so then if everything is fine then what we will do we'll create one credential variable so val credential this will be type of phone auth credentials equals to phone auth provider this one dot get credentials and here we need to pass the our otp that we get passed from the previous activity and then the typed otp okay so inside the phone activity you can in on verification co completed we get phone auth credentials and we pass that credentials inside the sign in with phone auth credential method so we can just copy this method from here and we need to add one thing here that if everything is successful just create one method here private fun send to main and here start activity intent not this intent on this to the main activity class dot java so if uh, authenticate success if user is authenticate successfully we'll send him to the main activity i'll just copy this code we can just copy this two functions from here and i will paste that over here okay so we just need to call this method in in here so after the credentials after uh, we create credential we can call this method just sign in with cred auth credentials and we can pass these credentials there so yeah okay so this this much of code is enough for authenticating the user with phone otp but remember in the layout we also have this recent otp button so we need to make it work so for that uh, we need to create another method just uh, copy the options from here we'll copy these options and it just minimize this minimize this minimize this we'll create one method which will be private fun recent verification verification code and in this method we'll paste the paste those options and you can see uh, we need to pass the number here so val well, number of type string and we also need to copy the callback so again we'll move to the phone activity and we'll copy the callbacks we'll copy them and we'll paste the callbacks over here or we can just paste them over here okay so we'll come back here in a second so yeah okay so i guess uh, we don't need to pass the parameters here as we already fetched the recent token and phone number and otp over here so they are we can access them over here as well so instead of number let's name it as a phone number and after the set callbacks we can have set force resending token method 
and this is important for resending the OTP and we'll just pass the resend token there I guess uh, that's enough we'll call this method uh, when we click on the resend token text view but before that uh, inside the callbacks we need to add some modification and we need to remove something so we'll just uh, remove this stuff that we don't need here here we just need to make our OTP equals to verification ID and our token resend token is equal to token okay so when we click on the resend token what happens uh, OTP is sent to the user again and we are just setting that verification ID means OTP to our existing OTP variable here we are just modifying its value and we are again modifying the resend token value so so if the user want to resend the OTP again even after doing it one time so this will be helpful so yeah so after this what we will do our uh, resend text view resend tv dot set on click listener and here we'll call the resend verification code method okay okay so yeah everything is done i guess uh, we just need to work for this progress bar and the visibility of the resend otp okay so for visibility of the resend otp we can create another method which will be private fun uh, let's just name it as a resend otp tv visibility and inside this first of all we'll just uh, set text we'll make all the uh, edit text null two three four and five last one six resend tv dot visibility first of all we'll make it invisible at the start so invisible view dot invisible and we'll also make it disable so set enable or is enable and this will be false then we'll have one handler and inside the handler we'll write looper dot my looper dot post delayed enable and we need to pass another parameter which will be the duration so we want to display it only up to 60 seconds so inside this we will write resend tv dot set visibility or visibility just to view dot visible and we'll also make it enable so resend tv is enable and make it true okay then we need to call this method we'll call that method over here so resend otp visibility and we'll also call that method over here so resend otp visibility okay so yeah uh, when in on create we call this method all the inputs will be set to null and we will just make our our text view invisible and we'll also set it to false or like we will disable it and then we started one handler which will be which we use to delay something so we are just uh, delaying this uh, visibility of the recent tv so it will be visible after 60 seconds so yeah and when we click on the recent tv or recent text view then again we are calling that method so it will work the similar way it will just set all the otp edit text to null and it will make our make our uh, recent tv invisible and false then after 60 seconds automatically it will be visible and it will be enabled so yeah i guess uh, that's pretty much stuff okay we need to work on the progress bar as well so guess we'll just create one private lady in it where for our progress bar so progress bar and this will be type of progress bar let's just initialize it in the init method so progress bar equals to 
find your ID r dot id dot otp progress bar I guess yeah so inside the init or or after the init we can just make our progress bar to invisible so view dot invisible and we'll make it visible when we click on the verify button so over here progress bar dot visibility will be visible so view dot visible and we'll make it invisible when we successfully sign in so before showing the toast progress bar dot visibility to view dot visible and i'll press alt ctrl l to reformat the code so yeah that's pretty much stuff now we'll try to run the, okay we need to again go to the main activity as well so it just it just have one button inside the main activity so let's just have one button here and i'll not design it i'll just keep it simple i'll name it sign out i'll provide it id as a sign out sign out button and inside the main activity similarly we will have private late init var for auth which will be type of firebase auth and private late init var for button so button is sign out button and type is button i'll not create init method here i'll just initialize it so firebase auth dot get instance and sign out button equals to find your id r dot id dot sign out button okay and sign out button will add on click listener on that sign out button so auth dot sign out so here we'll just start the activity we'll send user from main activity to phone activity after signing out so user can sign in again so we'll create one intent here and we'll pass this and phone activity class dot java okay we need to import the intent and yeah that's pretty much stuff so now we will try to run the app and we'll see it's working or not okay so before installing the app uh, we need to do one thing we need to copy this intent filter from here we need to cut it and we need to paste it uh, inside the phone activity over here and we need to make our exported parameter as a true and now i'll try to run this app so as you can see it is installed and it is asking me for typing my number so i will type it and then i'll click on the send otp button as you can see the progress bar is visible now so as you can see we received the otp so as you can see i haven't typed the otp i just wait for this 60 seconds to get uh, this text view visible which is resend otp now i'll click on the resend otp and we'll see if we get the otp again or not so the text view goes are disappeared and as you can see it automatically signed in so yeah this is how it works that sign in with the callback method which we have uh, let me just open the callbacks so in the otp activity we have this on verification completed method which gets triggered automatically so in our case this get triggered because we already send the otp to the user and we didn't type it but when we click on the resend otp and it again send that otp this method gets triggered it automatically help user to sign in so now we are in the main activity so i'll just click on the sign out now and i'll jump to the all the phone activity again and again i will type my number click on the send otp and this time uh, i want to type the otp myself so 777 nine six zero and i'll click on the verify so yeah this again worked so yeah that's it for this video and if you like the tutorial you can subscribe to the channel 
and if you open the uh, firebase console you will see the new user has been added and i will provide source code in the description box so if you have some errors you can just match your code with that or you can also dm me on the instagram at codingstuff070 so yeah that's it thank you for watching